Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? It is your boy, the franchise, aka one half of the GOW, the Generation Wrestling Podcast, uh, coming to you live and direct, man, representing that GOW media. Real quick, man, just wanted to take a little bit of time to kind of give my thoughts uh, on this past weekend's WWE 2024 Survivor Series War Games PLE. Um, it was five matches, right? We had three championship matches. We had two war games matches. The first one starting off the night was, of course, the women. We had Team Rhea, which consisted of Bianca Belair, EO Sky, Naomi, Bailey, and of course, Miami herself, Rhea Ripley, going up against Team Liv, which included the WWE Women's Champion, Nia Jax, the Women's World Champion, Liv Morgan, Miss Money in the Bank. Tiffany Stratton, Candice LeRae, and Raquel Rodriguez. And uh, I will say this, man. If I had to, I guess, go out on the limb and, and, and give my match of the night, I got to say, uh, the women definitely did their thing in the War Games match. Now, I will, I will say this. Uh, I did feel like there were, and I hate to use this word. I really hate to use this word uh, because it's become so passe right um everybody seems to say this word and when they say it, it's a bad thing where you know they try to uh to to crap on whatever they're talking about but i will say this there were a lot of botches or at least what appear to be botches right again don't want to be that guy um but there were a lot of moves and and it could just be camera angle too uh kind of showing us a little bit more of what we probably weren't supposed to see uh during certain you know uh setups and stuff like that but it is what it is man it's pro wrestling and then anytime you have a match a specialty match like this like a war games i mean you figure what you got six tons of steel i believe they said you got two big ass rings you got 10 women uh well i guess in this case 10 people because we had 10 women in one match and 10 men in the other you know fighting there's a lot of moving parts so i get it i understand but there were a lot of like uh okay like eh, eh, sloppy but overall it was what it was. I thoroughly enjoyed the match of EO Sky. EO did the damn thing. I mean, EO has EO is to war games with Kofi Kingston is to the Royal Rumble. Is with Brock Lesnar is to SummerSlam. Is with Shawn Michaels and the Undertaker or the WrestleMania. There's just certain people who are synonymous with certain events, certain match types, certain pay-per-views. And uh EO Sky, uh, once again, uh inside of a trash can doing a moonsault 20 feet off the top of the cage. How she didn't break her feet, I don't know. I don't understand it. But again, she's the genius of the sky for a reason. So I thoroughly enjoyed that. Uh, Tiffany Stratton, you know, you had a you had a moment in time where it looked like Tiffany was going to tease the cash in. Was she or was she not? But, of course, that didn't happen. Uh, then let's talk about the men's triple threat uh let me see here we have for the united states no excuse me for the intercontinental championship we had that boy big bad Braun breaker defending his title against sheamus and that boy Ludwig kaiser now uh Braun breaker he ended up retaining um sheamus he did real great he did great but I will say this, man. The person who had the standout match tonight, uh, performance in this match, was Ludwig Kaiser. Ludwig Kaiser, I loved him G and Giovanni Vinci, especially in NXT when they were a tag team as uh, you know, part of the Imperium Collective. I like that. Uh, Gunther Walter, uh, as he's also known, he's always kind of been the solo guy of the group, even though they've always kind of uh strung around as a three-man band and then eventually he just kind of got down to kaiser and gunther but lately it seems as gunther's you know slowly but surely uh distancing himself as he has his own battles and and fights to to uphold and maintain and you know he can't do that with uh Ludwig kaiser uh holding him back per se and he's like he's giving Ludwig kaiser uh the ability the freedom and the space to explore himself and his career as a singles competitor. So, again, even though Braun Breaker won, I mean, you got Sheamus in there, you know, the vet, uh, multi-time champ himself, uh, added credibility to this match. But then you got Ludwig Kaiser. It was like, okay, he didn't win, but sometimes you can win even in loss. And that's one thing about pro wrestling. Sometimes 
a loss does just as much good or even more than the actual win does. All right, moving forward, we got the World Heavyweight Championship. Speaking of Gunta, we got the reigning, defending WWE World Heavyweight Champion Gunther going up against the former WWE World Heavyweight Champion, former El Campeon, former Senior Money in the Bank, Damian Priest. And this was everything I thought it was going to be. It was a hard-hitting match. It was a good match. It was a tough fight. Priest said, hey, look, you might be the king of the ring. You might be a general when it comes to this mat, but when it comes to the streets, I'm the king, baby. And boy, did Damian Priest, did he show he is definitely a king. I will say this, even though Priest ended up losing, I'm excited to see them revisit this in the future. I personally don't think Gunther's going to lose the title for the rest of the year. I think he's going to go into WrestleMania. We shall see. We still got to get past uh, Royal Rumble. Um, and I think maybe Elimination Chamber before we get to Mania, if I'm not mistaken. There's been a tease. Goldberg said his last match will be in 2025. They've teased Gunther. They teased Goldberg. So I think once Gunther gets through Goldberg, then we can revisit this whole thing with Damian Priest. We shall see. All right. But then, 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 then. So let's see. We talked about the U.S. We talked about, No, we didn't talk about the U.S. The United States Championship, a very quick match. We got, at the time, reigning champion la night yeah going up against that boy shinsuke nakamura and when i say this match ended very quick i did not expect the match to end as quick as it did i was thoroughly shocked but in the best way possible i mean we just had shinsuke come back uh to wwe television he's been doing this thing i believe in new japan uh ever since he's been off of wwe television if i'm not mistaken so we know we got a brand new iteration of shinsuke nakamura this very heel this very uh 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 it seems true to form true to self version of shinsuke nakamura who ended up picking up a very quick victory over la night yeah and became your new wwe uh, united states champion and then of course the main event the men's Survivor Series War Games, where you had Roman Reigns, you got Jimmy and Jay Uso throwing the ones up, you got the honorary Uso from Sammy Uso from the penitentiary, the Uso penitentiary, and that boy CM Punk, they teamed up against Solo Sokoa, Jacob Fatu, and he made it known he loved his tribal chief, Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, and that boy from Tsunami State, Big Bad Bronson Reed. Yeah, man. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. You had so many heavy hitters, and the women's match had some too. But what I'm talking about right now, I mean, you got so many heavy hitters. You got CM Punk, the formal need uh former needle mover in AEW. And if you know anything about the needle mover, Roman Reigns came out with a shirt that said he was the needle mover when you had the whole back and forth between WWE and AEW and they was taking their little jabs at each other. But it's cool because now we in the same cage. And then you got the, ooh, souls doing their damn thing, man. Jimmy and Jay showed up and showed out, gave us some of that old school brotherly love that we've been missing. But then don't you worry because we got the honorary Uso himself. Who? Sammy Uso, that boy Sammy Zayn did the damn thing. But let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Solo Sokoa being very methodical, being the OG that he is kept it cool kept it gangster was the last one to come out on the og uh excuse me on the bloodline 2.0 side but let's talk about that boy the samoa werewolf that boy jacob fatu that boy jacob fatu was made for the wwe baby jacob fatu was made for mainstream jacob fatu was made for entertainment i know before jacob fatu got signed before the samoa werewolf got signed i know there was rumblings there was in, uh, 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 ink inklings and rumors is is he too wild for the wwe can he can, can he can, can he play along within the wwe system is he too violent is he too street is he too real nah brother mm -mm. that boy jacob fatu said yeah we could bring this real shit we could bring it to the mainstream and we can make it do what it do the samoa werewolf did a great job in his first war games. He did great. Uh, Tama Tonga, once again, being the crazy SOB he is, he was very entertaining in this match. Solo Sokoa calling the shots, very entertaining. That boy, Big Bronson Reed, the monster, man. Uh, dude, colossal, 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 colossal splash off the top. Uh, I believe he broke his toe 
or something like that. I got I got I got to go back and recheck uh, what I, what, I, what I saw earlier if that is indeed the case. Uh, after a big splash through the table, uh, man, he took all of that, man. Uh, so again, uh, great match though. Well, I'm not gonna say great match. It was an entertaining match. Uh, I for one was under the impression that maybe somebody like The Rock would be coming back. The final boss but i think we got him already at bad blood so it's like you know my partner too cold said well what's the point of him coming back two pay-per-views in a row and just not say anything but again you know hey it was what it was now did i think as a big four pay-per-view did i think this lived up to the hype and expectations i have of a uh, big four pay-per-views honestly it did not i feel like it was very tame it was very mild especially giving you know the star power in this, uh, it was just a very cut and dry pay per view. And sometimes, man, you know, less is more. And in this case, I think even though I didn't get what I expected to get, I got what I needed to. And for that, I can understand and I can appreciate and I can respect that. But with that being said, man, just want to come on here, get my quick thoughts. Um, if you haven't already, Generation Wrestling Podcast, be sure to subscribe, like us on all social media and podcast platforms. Um, I'm usually doing it with my boy King Two Cold Man. We usually on here Monday night for the Monday night block party talking WWE Monday Night Raw, Wednesday night block party, AEW Dynamite, Friday night block party talking SmackDown to sometimes Rampage and or collision on Saturdays. If it warrants that every now and again on Tuesdays for the Tuesday night block party, we talk a little NXT on Thursdays of the weeks of pay-per-views and PLEs. We always on for a Thursday night block party to give y'all them predictions and spoilers and uh yeah so if you love pro wrestling if you love wrestling content hell if you just want to see two people talk shit and have fun and you just want to join in on the party man come holler at us because at the gow we all family yes sir and with that being said ladies and gentlemen thank you once again for tuning in to a very special short preview edition of the gow the generation wrestling podcast we'll be coming back on tomorrow for monday night to recap in its entirety, what happened on Summer Us? Oh, I said Summer Slam. Damn, I'm tired. Thanksgiving weekend, y'all. What happened on Survivor Series, Bloodline, OG Bloodline, uh, the Women's War Games match, the U.S. title match, uh, the World Heavyweight Championship match, the Intercontinental uh, match, I believe. Oh, my God. I'm getting, I'm tired. But anywho, anywho, Monday night, man block party so come tap in come tune in if you haven't already make sure to subscribe to the generation wrestling podcast we got interviews with mickey james ddp godfather chris van vliet thunder rosa uh jordan grace leo rush jtg uh eric bischoff um godfather and so many more so if you love pro wrestling and if you love us man tune in until next time on the franchise peace